Thank you very much, um, Muloto. And allow me to recognize the presence of the Chair of the Council of Provinces and the Deputy, um, Mayor Tate Masondo and Mayor Sylvia Lucas, and the Secretary to Parliament, Mr. Kolile George, and the two secretaries, one of the National Assembly, Mr. Kaso, and two of the NCOP, Advocate Pindela. As you have heard, my name is Nosi Viwe, and I'm the Speaker of the National Assembly of Parliament. I think it is proper that I should start by also apologizing, and I'm sure that is what uh, Mloto has done that already about yesterday. We are aware that we, you were at the Constitutional Court for quite some time, waiting to hear the outcome of the meeting but also you were interested in taking a photo shoot of the, of the meeting. Unfortunately, it was not to be. I want to apologize profusely to you for that. The meeting took way longer than what we had anticipated, all of us. I think it took about three hours. So by the time we finished, uh, there were other issues, matters, which we all needed to attend to. Now, the meeting with the Chief Justice, as the presiding officers of Parliament representing the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces, we held this crucial meeting with the Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. The purpose of the meeting was to address concerns between the judiciary and the legislature, specifically regarding recent public statements made by the Chief Justice regarding Parliament's role in implementing the recommendations of the Judicial Commission into the state capture, corruption, fraud, and the, in the public sector, including organs of state. The presiding officer sought this meeting to address any concerns Chief Justice Zondo may have heard about Parliament's implementation of the Commission's recommendation and to ease ongoing tensions that could potentially harm the future relations between the two institutions. The meeting took place in a cordial atmosphere, underscoring the recognition of the need for continued engagement on matters of mutual interest pertaining to the constitutional obligations of both institutions. Crucially, Parliament remains fully committed to its ongoing implementation of the State Captures Commission's recommendation. During the meeting, the presiding officers and the Chief Zondo acknowledged the mutually reinforcing nature of the relationship between the legislature and the judiciary. They emphasized the vital importance of this relationship to the, to the functioning system of our democracy. Therefore, the presiding officers took the opportunity to clarify that the perception created that Parliament was not implementing the, recom the Commission's recommendations with the necessary speed is far from the truth. Both parties expressed their willingness to continue engaging on matters of mutual interest and concern, highlighting the importance of maintaining open lines of communication and cooperation between the judiciary and the, and the legislature to uphold the democratic values and institutions that underpin our society. Two state capture recommendations the State Capture Commission submitted its final report to the President, who then tabled it to Parliament on the 23rd of October 2022.
the Commission made 16 recommendations on Parliament's role, in addition to three recommendations relating to legislation and the work of the Committee on Ethics and Members' Interests. Numerous recommendations also concerned state departments and other entities. Then under Parliament's implementation of the recommendations, in response to the Commission's recommendations, we developed a comprehensive implementation plan structured around four key focus areas, namely parliamentary oversight and accountability, parliamentary oversight of the executive's response plan, monitoring of parliament's implementation plan, and parliamentary reforms to strengthen parliament's constitutional mandate. The implementation plan was referred to the relevant implementation on the 20, 31st of January 2023. Thus far, of the 19 recommendations relating specifically to the work of Parliament, 11 have been implemented and eight are underway. As part of the implementation plan, at least 22 relevant parliamentary committees have been assigned to oversee executive action regarding the Commission's recommendations. These commissions, committees are required to provide quarterly reports on oversight matters related to the implementations of the Commission's recommendations. Under recommended legislative reforms, Parliament acknowledges the significance of legislative reforms suggested by the State Capture Commission. Work is underway to address these recommendations and the Rules Committee has already reached conclusive positions on certain matters. Parliament has taken note of the Commission's recommendation to consider passing electoral reforms enabling a constituency-based electoral system alongside the existing proportional representative system. The recently enacted Electoral Amendment Act of 2023 establishes the Electoral Reform Consultation Panel, which will consult and make recommendations on potential electoral systems reforms. Regarding the Commission's recommendation to enact legislation protecting members of Parliament from losing their party membership and seats, Parliament affirms that the Constitution and that the Constitution and the Powers and Privileges and Immunities of Parliament and Provincial Legislatures Act of 2004 already provide powers and protection to members in the exercise of their functions. Therefore, no new legislative interventions are required in this regard. The Commission also recommended amending the Intelligence Services Oversight Act to ensure that outgoing Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence of Parliament reports to Parliament and provides an account of its work conducted during the previous five-year term. After careful consideration, the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence concluded that no amendments to current legislation are necessary, as the existing law already addresses the Commission's concern. To ensure consistent and regular reporting, the committee's support has been reinforced with requisite administrative capacity. The Commission emphasized that weaknesses in parliamentary oversight and executive accountability have contributed to corruption and maladministration over time. On this basis, the Commission recommended considering the principle of a mandatory accountability through an Act of Parliament to enhance oversight over the executive and its internal procedures. Parliament conducted research on international practices in 12 countries to evaluate comparable laws 
including a mandatory accountability. The Rules Committee concluded that while certain legal reforms relating to parliamentary procedures advocated by the Commission may not be desirable at present, they could be considered in the future if necessary. In the meantime, the Rules Committee has agreed, which I chair, has agreed as on per parameters for guidelines to regulate relevant processes. Now, under strengthening of parliamentary oversight and executive accountability, Parliament acknowledges the importance of sufficient funding for effective oversight, particularly for committees. Despite current budgetary constraints, Parliament is actively engaging with the National Treasury to secure additional resources that align with its constitutional mandate. Parliament is also actively addressing the Commission's recommendation to establish an oversight and advisory section within Parliament, which will provide necessary technical support for committees. To enhance committee oversight capabilities over the executive, Parliament has committed to ensuring adequate funds. Additionally, Parliament has enhanced the scale and skills of research and technical assistance available to the portfolio committees. Critical positions, including content advisors, legal advisors, and researchers have been filled, whilst recruitment is underway for the remaining positions. And I want to emphasize that this all happened at the insistence of the report of the Commission. This capacity will fulfill this recommendation in the interim, while the envisioned oversight and advisory section undergoes consideration as part of the parliamentary realignment process set to conclude before the end of the current financial year. The Commission also highlighted instances where the executive fails to take account of parliamentary resolutions and report on them. Parliament acknowledges that challenges with resolution implementation sometimes originate within Parliament itself, including monitoring and the technical nature of the resolutions. To address these challenges, the Rules Committee recommended that recommendations arising from the committee activities be substantiated, specific, include timeframes, and relate to matters within the purview of the assembly. Additionally, the speaker will maintain a record of resolutions and in case of delays, liaise with the leader of government business. The speaker will report to the Rules Committee of the National Assembly twice a year on the status of the responses. To ensure appropriate executive accountability for processing resolutions, Parliament will enforce measures requiring the executive to report to Parliament on measures emanating from resolutions within the prescribed time frames or if no time frames have been given within 60 days. The leader of government business will submit an annual report to the speaker on the status of executive compliance with resolutions, which will be then be included in the speaker's report to the rules committee. The commission also raised concerns about instances where ministers and other others failed to appear before Parliament without adequate cause. The Rules Committee notes that the powers, privileges, and immunities of Parliament and Provincial Legislatures Act, Act 4 of 2004, already considers such actions as contempt of Parliament, making therefore them offenses under the Act. However, invoking the act has always been seen as the last resort. 
and cooperation between parliament and the executive is preferred before pursuing sanctions. The Rules Committee emphasizes that measures have been implemented to facilitate executive attendance and existing legislation has been successfully utilized as demonstrated recently by the minister summoned to appear before a committee in 2022. Under merit-based appointments in state institutions, Regarding the selection of office bearers to state, for state institutions or organs, the Commission emphasized the importance on high-level public scrutiny and merit-based appointments. Parliament acknowledged that laws and best practices concerning the selection of certain office bearers are already in place, ensuring merit-based appointments. To enhance the integrity of these appointments, Parliament will develop guidelines that incorporate relevant laws and best practices. Under oversight over presidency, Parliament has considered establishing a committee to oversee aspects of the presidency, not currently supervised by existing structures, as recommended by the Commission. The Parliamentary Budget Office conducted research to identify aspects of the presidency budget not currently subjected to parliamentary scrutiny. The Parliamentary Budget Office concluded that Parliament should strengthen its oversight over the presidency and recommend further research. The Rules Committee agreed that the PBO's desktop research should be supplemented with a fact-finding visit to explore international best practices on the matter. The comprehensive approach will establish a solid foundation for the seventh parliament and the findings of the fact-finding mission, which took place recently, will be processed. We can talk to those matters, on our, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the media, when you seek clarity. Under consideration of committee chairpersons, commission recommended that parliamentary oversight may be better served if more chairpersons were elected from minority parties. Parliament affirms the authority of the assembly to determine committee chairpersons and internal arrangements, proceedings, and procedures. In this regard, it will not interfere with democratic decision-making processes within the committee, which include election of chairpersons. However, Parliament will ensure promotion of fair and representative selection of committee chairpersons. Under MPs fingered in the Commission report, during the Commission's proceedings, Several members of parliament were implicated. The presiding officers referred six members of parliament to the Joint Committee on Ethics and Members' Interest. And an additional six were sent by an external entity. Now, to date, the committee has found against three MPs cleared five, whilst two are still under consideration. At least two MPs have since resigned from Parliament and therefore fall outside of the scope of the application of the Ethics Code. The committee will give a comprehensive report of this work in line with quarterly reporting arrangements. Under Executive Implementations Plan, with respect to the executive's implementation plan submitted by the president to parliament, parliament acknowledges that the president's response to the commission's recommendations includes the implementation of specified recommendations, outlines the implementation of aspects of the recommendations, and identifies areas for further consideration. Some responses provide reasons for not implementing specific recommendations, including instances 
where they overlap with ongoing government work. The majority of the Commission's recommendations are directed towards law enforcement agencies for investigation and potential prosecution. Although these agencies operate within the executive arm of the state, they are constitutionally and legislatively, legislatively mandated to exercise their responsibilities independently. To ensure the desired outcomes of these recommendations, the designated committees and structures of parliament must provide quarterly reports to the program committee. Committees are reporting on the progress in monitoring and overseeing the implementation of the commission's recommendations. Conclusion. The presiding officers of parliament commend the constructive meeting with the Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. And we expressed our gratitude for the frank discussions held during that engagement. Parliament assures the public that it is dedicated to implementing the Commission's recommendations diligently and transparently, ensuring accountability and safeguarding the integrity of our democratic institutions. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen.